allow me to regale you all with the epic um, classic Gilgamesh? Gilgamesh story yeah. of how Gilgamesh, also known as me, Emma, um, found a PlayStation 5. Regale me. Okay. As you all may know, PlayStation 5s have been notoriously hard to find. Um, mm -hmm. They came out like two years ago, and due to supply chain issues and difficulties with electronics during COVID, um, there just haven't been a whole lot being made. And then when there are like shipments of them, uh, there's not a lot and scalpers get a lot of them and it's just a bad time for all. So yeah. um, I have wanted one because there are numerous games coming out soon that are PlayStation 5 exclusives um, that I really want to play. And oh, yeah, um, I've been scared that I wouldn't get to play them and I'd have to wait like a year or two years for them to come out on like PC and then I'd be able to play them. But by that point, they'd been like spoiled and everything. So it's just kind of stressing. So I've always been keeping my out, eye out for PS5s. And a couple weeks ago, I was just I was like on a random kick of like PS5 content that's coming out soon. And I decided to look on Twitter and search to see if there was any news about PS5 restocks or anything coming out. And I saw a post from somebody like three days before where they took a picture of their Walmart and their yeah. Walmart had like a shit ton of PS5s. And so I was like, huh, I wonder if any like stores near me have PS5s or anything. Um, so I looked on like Walmart's website and there was nothing. I looked on Best Buy's website and there was nothing. And then I looked on Target's website. And for anybody that has worked retail, you will know how this is. Uh, sometimes the websites say you have something when you, in fact, do not have that thing. Oh, yes. Oh, yep. yes. So most every Target um, within like 10 miles of me um, was showing that they did not have PlayStation 5s. But there were like two that said that they had limited stock available. Um, but I feel like that's code for we just sold out, but we don't want to tell you that yet. Potentially. <laughs> yeah. And like you, when you're looking at, at it, like there's normally an option of like, oh, buy to like pick up or whatever. And that option wasn't there. And the two targets that had that option, one on Google maps, didn't even look like it was like open yet. It looked like it was under construction. Um, and the other one was close to me, um, and I'd been there before, but it's like a very small target. So um, I hopped in an Uber and decided to check it out anyway and went in. And when I got there, this target was a lot smaller than I remembered. And I remembered it being small anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it was basically a like neighborhood target that largely only had food and baby clothes. Um, mm. There was like a small section for like some household items. And then there was one aisle of electronics that was almost entirely phone accessories. <laughs> um, they didn't have any place for games or anything. Uh, and nice. so I was like, I do not think these people will have PlayStation fives, but I just, Paid like $13 for an Uber to get here, so I might as well like ask somebody. I eventually find this older woman who had helped somebody else in the electronic section, and I asked her, like, hey, I like saw online that the Target website said you all have like limited like PlayStation 5s. Um, and she was like, you know, I think we do. Um, she's like, I have to go like ask, like talk to my manager and like make sure though. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And so she disappeared um, and then was gone for like 15 minutes. And uh, the entire time I'm thinking this is an older woman. Um, I assume she doesn't know much about gaming stuff. So 
I'm not getting my hopes up. But then she came back and she was like, apparently I'm supposed to ask you like follow up questions of like, all this other stuff. Um, the follow up questions were if I wanted like a digital only version, a disc version or um, I heard Verizon bundle, but I think it was supposed to be Horizon like Zero Dawn bundle. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm just looking for the digital version. But if you don't have that and you have something else, I'll happily take it. She was like, okay, I think we do. Let me go look. And so she went and disappeared for like another 20 minutes. Oh my and gosh. then eventually <laughs> came back out with a fucking PS5. Um, huh. And it was oh really surprising. God. Just this random ass neighborhood target. Wow. With like next to no electronics department had one. Um, and I'm really glad that I went. Yeah. Because I checked again the next day. And the next day it was saying that they were sold out. <laughs> so sounds to me like one. you got the last they had one. one that was they yeah, had one amazing. yeah <laughs> wow so now what i've got my ps5 and it's been wonderful and god of war comes out this week and i'm real excited cool. um and then even more games come out over the next few months and um i'm happy see i was uh when you said walmart's got a lot of them uh, apparently a Walmart I went to had a PS5 box. I'm like, holy shit, you guys have PS5s? And the guy's like, oh no. If you look, it says coming soon. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dang. I'm like, why would you put a PS5 box there that just says coming soon? God of War's gonna be on the PS4 too, right? No idea. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank yeah. God. Because I Nina am... was about to cry right now. I am so excited <laughs> for this game. <laughs> Yes, it is on PS4 and PS5. Um, it was made primarily for PS4, um, mm-hmm. from what I understand, but it has additional features and things on the PS5. Cool. I'm getting it on, like, I'm I'm doing it. Almost want, release day, I believe is what Nina is trying to say. The soonest that I can get up to the exchange, because I want to see my friends too. Mm-hmm. So, well, I joke's on you. I'm going to get it on release day itself <laughs> well digital I- drop air horn air horn air horn everyone just wanted to give a little thing here vhs is a is a pretty upsetting movie if you were to just sit down and watch it i'm you know it it has a lot going on in it so one of the things that we wanted to make sure that we got out in the front here is maybe this is one that you might want to listen to the episode first and find out if any of the shorts we mentioned sound interesting enough that you want to check them out we as as a group you know spoiler alert uh kind of agree that for the number of good segments in this movie, the whole movie is not exactly worth watching, but that is 100% up to each person's personal like decision of what they feel like they're up to watching. But we would recommend you actually just listen to the episode because none of the stories, if we spoil the story points, I don't think many of them will be ruined by that because the primary focus for a VHS anthology is the aesthetic of the filming over other things such as writing and you can find most of these shorts separately online as well so yeah just wanted to throw that out there if there's something that's interesting to you maybe just look up the short that sounds fun and leave the entire movie itself um off to the wayside for what it's worth when i recommended this um i was thinking a lot of the second movie which is a lot less horrifically misogynistic lol my bad but yeah we hope you enjoy the episode and if you're not comfortable with any of the trigger warnings that we bring up maybe uh Maybe you just listen to the episode instead of watching the movie. Welcome back to Casual Obsession, the horror movie podcast where we talk about horror movies. I am your host, Noah, and as always, with me today are Emma. Hi. Jeff. Salutations. And Nina. Hello. This week, we are talking about VHS, released in 2012. A more 2012 movie I don't know exists outside of perhaps the movie 2012. Uh, ATM, maybe? <laughs> Yeah, I was oh, going to say, no, when was ATM back, I released? I feel <laughs> like if you're going to compare true. this movie to any non-found footage movie, it might be ATM. 
I, th- I think that makes sense to me. Who? Who? Uh, so here, here's our, our quick spoiler free intro. All right. Uh, five associates who make and sell weird case or weird tapes showcasing illegal content are tasked with retrieving a specific VHS from an older man's house. When they arrive, they find him dead watching a stack of TVs all showing static. The group splits up to check the rest of the house with one man being left behind to check the stack of tapes in the room with the dead man. Yep. Yeah, I guess that's that's the framing device. All right. So Uh um, it's um, a it's a pretty straightforward thing. Um, There is more lore to this scene that is explained in subsequent movies or this like premise. So I'm going to give you guys that because it doesn't. It doesn't hurt future movies, and it kind of helps at least understand the framing narrative uh, segment of this movie. Okay. Um, There is a secret society of people who trade snuff films, is the idea. And there's certain very collectible ones, but also there's the idea that some of them are, like, cursed or something, I guess. But the point of this was the guys who were sent to retrieve the tape, it was either A... Because they were told to film the whole thing, it was either they were going to be the next tape uh, of them being killed, or they end up getting out of there with this incredibly collectible tape, and it's a win-win either way for the people involved in the secret. Okay, so they um, they were snuff tapes. They were told society. to video the whole thing. Yes, I didn't catch that in this movie at all, and the whole time through, I the don't believe device, it is. It. I was just like, why are they recording this? It yeah, they just seem like those weird friends that film this. everything, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, It's because they're doing illegal activities again, and at the very least, they can sell the tape of them breaking into someone's house and fucking with his shit, even if they don't find the tape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why they exactly. were like leaking out to find a dead body, because they're like, oh, cool, we can sell mm-hmm. this even more now. Um, Later on, you learned that the tape they were looking for is the limited edition 2002 Amaz- uh, Spider-Man duct tape um, limited edition. Oh, shit. <laughs> so mm-hmm. um, I know what that is, and that surprise. is true. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's our short description. Um, but Noah, what did people think about this movie yeah, when what it came was out? The, was there a critical People reception? didn't be thinking much about this movie. Huh. We're looking at a 5.8 on IMDb. A 56 on Rotten Tomatoes, a 54 on Metacritic, and a 2.9 out of 5, or 60%-ish, on Letterboxd. Wow, that is... I think that's the most middling reviews we've had, like, consistent middling yeah. reviews we've had for a movie across across platforms. I think so. Um, yeah. So far. I don't have anything from Brandon. Um, okay. I searched, I checked... And unfortunately, all I could find was him saying that VHS 94 is the first one of the entire franchise to do the premise well. Okay. According to Twitter, Brandon. So if we have to go that Um, far for it, then (laughs) I'm just going to skip. Well, in in full fair. (laughs) Yes. uh, Firstly, VHS 94 is fantastic. Very worth watching. Okay. Um, But no, what did you think about this one? This was it fantastic. Worth watching. I had this idea to rank each segment one to ten and then make my average rating what the movie is mm. for me. I feel like However, that makes sense. However, I decided not to do that because that's a lot of math. And by a lot of math, I mean, I just sit, it was really, it was like midnight when we finished watching this. And mm. I just didn't feel like doing that. So I'm going to give it a five out of 10. I think that this is a really four to five out of 10 movie for me. Yeah. That is only saved by two and a half segments. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Whose turn is it now? I don't know. Whoever, Nina, whoever talk, wants it. So. Yeah, you okay. talked first. Got opinions, go. I'm, give, I'm giving this movie a one out of ten. Boom. I think that's super yeah. fair, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it deserves yeah. it. The one is for specific, for one short being okay, and for some special effects co- and concepts being kind of interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I watched this last night with Piper, and... Um, oh, no. Piper... I'm sorry, Piper. Yeah, so I I gave Piper the warnings that you all gave me as well. And they're mm-hmm. like, okay, I appreciate the warnings. I'm in a good enough headspace. Let's do it. Oof. Um, and they similarly gave it a one out of ten. Yeah. I think um, that's yeah. an incredibly reasonable stance to have. It is. The yeah. movie comes on really strong. And 
in a derogatory yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, it comes in hot. It's, um, it's bad. I'm also gonna give it a one out of ten, yeah. maybe like a two out of ten. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. There were some parts of this movie that were like cool, but were tainted largely by a lot of shittiness throughout. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That we will get into and that you will understand from the various content warnings that we'll have. Um, But uh, afterwards, we had to kind of clean our palates a little bit. So we Mm. watched Pearl and Pearl's a great movie. 10 out of 10. Oh, yeah. We need to watch Pearl. We watched Forged in Fire. Yeah, we watched half of an episode of Forged in Fire. We picked our favorite. (laughs) We didn't want to get mad at the wrong person winning, so we stopped watching. Mm. Nice, Nice. I watched this movie two days in a row. And the first time wow. immediately afterward, I watched Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, which is a 12 out of 10, one of the best movies ever made, and I love mm-hmm. it. Easily. And the other Good time... Good palate cleanser as well. Yeah, fantastic palate cleanser. Holy shit. And uh, the second time, last night, I watched like the first half of Blazing Saddles. Nice. Oh, I love Blazing Saddles. Because I was just like, you know, I'm tired of watching this shitty movie about these shitty guys all white and saying the N-word all the time, gratuitously. So yeah. to, to get away from that, you know, I'm going to watch wholesome, beloved <laughs> Mel Brooks comedy Blazing Saddles. <laughs> I'm very curious. Like, you talked about how you were going to watch it twice, but I'm very curious why you watched it twice. I... As soon as I started watching it the second time, I was regretting it. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> as soon as yeah. I hit the play button, I was just like, oh, no, the, I remember how it starts again now. This is going to be awful. But I just, I have never finished a movie and felt so strongly that I missed something, you know? Mm. Like, I, f- yeah. I felt throughout, like, this movie was making some kind of a point that I just wasn't picking up somehow. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to try and nope. just nope. pull it apart in a way that would make it make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I have not got much. I <laughs> did you drop your number rating yet? I have not dropped my number okay. rating yet. I don't know how to feel about it. This is a really yeah. weird movie. It sits in a really weird spot where I feel like no matter what a person rated it, I would just be like, yeah, that sounds right. Like, if somebody watched this movie and was like, holy shit, that was an incredible horror movie, 10 out of 10, I'd be like, yeah. But also hearing all of you be like, 1 out of 10, I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm, And -hmm. all the, like, middle of the road fives, I'm just like, well, yeah. It it is (laughs) all you're going to give it a 10 out of 10. I I think I'm giving it a 5. I I don't want to give it a 1, but at the same time, I really want to give it a 1. Yeah, I feel like it's too mm-hmm. good for me to give it a bad rating, but I feel like it's too bad for me to give it a good rating. I like it, but I absolutely hate it. I mm-hmm. want to watch it again to try and figure out what I'm not getting, but also I want to put it down and never <laughs> Jeff, touch watch it. This I gotta watch this a third, third time. time. <laughs> can, can I say? Watch VHS uh, 2. <laughs> see, so, that's what I'm going to end up doing. I'm going to watch the other VHS movies and like get into those help. instead. That's kind of what I'm hoping just, for. Um, before we started recording, Emma said that this movie was shown at Sundance. And can I just say the absolute lack of shame on white, most, I don't know if they're all white, so I'm not going to say that, of male directors to show this at a film festival. Right? The lack of shame you, to put yeah. this up and be like, yeah, we're proud of this. Like, it's, yeah, it's, we like, put this I, together. <laughs> And we all now, had the same idea, and that idea how much was we hate women. Yeah, the idea okay, was so men suck, right? <laughs> real quick, th- this is a correct read. Big, gigantic butt. Yeah. Bloody Disgusting does uh, provide some of the programming for the horror segments mm. of film festivals, mm-hmm. which is probably how yeah. they got it. Yeah, and this is a Bloody Disgusting. Probably. Uh, I'm not saying that movie. that makes... Yeah, I'm not saying that that makes this an excusable anything or anything like that. However, mm-hmm. yeah, that is probably how I, they got into a film festival. I read something. I'm going to pull the page back up in the research that I was doing for trivia earlier today. Uh, I use the term research very loosely. Um, <laughs> IMDB. On the Wikipedia page, there was a section about how oh, the yeah. idea of this movie came together. And I'm just going to uh, pull that up real quick. A group mm-hmm. of guys were sitting around and they're like, hey, you know how much we hate women? Let's make a movie. <laughs> no, it's right? worse. See, it's worse. They all came to it independently, as, as, <laughs> Jeff, will, uh, as Jeff will tell us in a uh, moment here. 
In an interview with IndieWire, producer Brad Miska revealed the process in which they developed VHS, which included a trust fall style of filmmaking, whatever the hell that means. All of the relationships came through the long history of Bloody Disgusting, allegedly. Okay. Um, So Mm -hmm. these guys all knew each other because of Bloody Disgusting, basically. Yep. Uh, They, uh, let's see. Uh, Okay, Brad Miska says... For VHS, we went to people that I have a relationship with via Bloody Disgusting, a group of trusted filmmakers who we thought would want to take part in this. They pitched us their ideas, then came to us with treatments and scripts, and it was like, if you like this, go do your thing. In terms of the movie itself getting greenlit, the story that runs through the whole movie was something that we had originally discussed, so we just went with the decided-upon, streamlined story and just let the filmmakers go do their thing, which is kind of a reverse of how you're supposed to do a movie like this. You're supposed to do that last. It became a fill-in-the-hole type project. What can we put here? What can we put here? And what would amp it up here? So it was a living project, a living film, if you will, is what he says. Yep. And I think that part of, like, the structure works fine. I don't think there are any major structural issues with how the segments are, like, put in mm-hmm. or the framing device, like, as a concept. Yeah, like, that's not I think the issue with the framing no, narrative. Not at no. all. That's not it. No. The, the issue, issue with the framing narrative is how proud Adam Wingard seems to be of a specific shot that he had. The one which in the is credits? Also... <laughs> yeah. yeah. The one that gets the played worst... over and the over one... in the credits? The worst part of the I... movie? <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna keep my let's it's let's so on that okay. note let's Let me, get to I'm the say, uh, I'm gonna hit content warnings real yeah. quick yeah um we have sexual assault and uncomfortable sexual content separate here uh because both happen and the movie is saturated with um both both yeah I have never <laughs> um, been more uncomfortable watching a movie as an asexual this movie feels I think that's so feel reasonable it. as you watch it, it the movie feels so fucking and gross I have some stuff I want to talk about that yeah Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, we have um, the N word with the hard R, among other iterations, also without, uh, used yeah. <laughs> liberally in the frame narrative tape fifty six. Uh, we have misogyny, epilepsy warning, uh, shaky camera. We have I have it written down as forced birth. It's spoilers for a later segment. People yeah. are being used as an incubation pod for aliens. It's weird. And I know that's something like... that does specifically upset a lot of people. So we got mm-hmm. that in here. Um, we got self mutilation, a whole lot of nudity. Lots There's of nudity. a lot of nudity in this, and general bad vibes. Tons. I. Absolute it is tons. safe to say this yep. is, and I think the reason that this movie sits in a part of my brain. This is not a ten star Noah movie, by the way. I want to. Okay, thank God. <laughs> yes. This, but it was a seven star movie. I had ranked this movie seven stars in the past. It has dropped down. Well, that sounds right. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> but um, I think the reason I remember this movie fondly is because clearly, as I was saying before, many of the segments I quote unquote remembered are mm-hmm. not from this movie. Yeah. I think it's the. The fact that this movie makes me so viscerally uncomfortable. Incredible, yeah. I hate this movie because of how unhappy it makes me. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of movie that, like, actually, like, when I'm done watching, I'm like, I'm kind of, like, I wouldn't say scared, but I'm so on edge, especially with the the chaotic noise music in the credits Mm -hmm. with the really flashy, aggressive cuts. It's... An assault on the senses. Yeah. It feels like a zero budget movie that some YouTube guys made that is also a snuff film. Yeah. Yeah. And that is why I think that this movie is a five because it at least does its job of being an incredibly unpleasant, uncomfortable experience, which is what it set out to do. It is functional. It is just (laughs) not for not for me. Except for some of the segments, which I very much did enjoy, and I can't wait to talk about those segments later. Yeah. But before we talk about those segments, I would like to ask Emma a very important question. Uh-huh. On a scale of, hypothetically, 1 to 10, maybe yeah. even 0 to 10, Uh huh. how scary is this movie? So, if we're talking, so I'm going to give two separate ratings. There's sure. straight mm-hmm. scary, and there's uncomfy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. For an uncomfy rating, this is a 10 out of 10. Um, mm-hmm. the, 
if you are uh if you are a woman or yeah. someone no, someone who has like basic empathy uh, or something basic empathy <laughs> um or not a shit bag basically anybody who's not a shit bag if guy, you're not one of the guys in the movie <laughs> if you're not one of the guys in the movie this is a massively uncomfortable movie with how they treat women um and it's like <sighs> I get sometimes, and this is something we've talked about in other episodes of the podcast, is how horror movies treat women and women's trauma, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. how there are some movies that we've watched, like Fresh, and um, I think X2, where uh, women and like nudity and trauma and like all these things are handled like respectfully and in a good way, and uh it adds to the narrative and it's good um this is not that no, this nope. is just assholes being really gross and assholey to women mm-hmm. throughout the movie yeah mm-hmm. um and they and do it's like, really really uncomfortable they do like get punished for it but it really doesn't feel like that's the it's goal. not a the point yeah of that's it. not it's enough also, like Mm-hmm. At, at, like I think one of my favorite things I could ever like address this way is in Birds of Prey there's a scene where one of the bad guys does some pretty gross stuff but the focus is on him and and any shot that shows her is made to make sure that you know that what he's done is wrong. Mm. That's not what the framing in this movie yeah. is like. The framing in this mm-hmm. movie is like, look at ooh, it. Woo, you want to look at boobs. it, right? Like, look. You want to look at the boobs. Yeah. You're taking part in this thing, but that make that makes you like gross too or something. And it's like, yeah. no, it doesn't. You're the one who's decided to put this on the screen over and over again. You're yeah. the gross one. This is not a commentary or a critique in any way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for an actual scary rating, there are some like actual scary things in this movie. Um, mm-hmm. There's some, I think the fact that this is a found footage and the camera quality on things is so bad most of the time um, yes. and the camera is shaky constantly. Yeah. It lends to like the special effects and the makeup that they do use. Because it's not like some high def camera where you notice like every mistake of the special effects or like the makeup, like it all fits together pretty well. Um, because of that, when there are creepy things, most of the time it does play out well. So for an actual scary rating, I'd give this like a four or five. But um, I I would not say it's not worth it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I wouldn't is, say like yeah. it's worth it at all. This is definitely yeah. one of those movies that I would advocate like m- maybe listening to a podcast about it or something, but like don't watch it. Look up different. There are certain segments in this that are worth watching, and yeah. you can usually and find them separate from the framing narrative. Yeah. And I've you seen. Can do that. The yeah. first segment I have seen before. Uh-huh. I I saw Amateur Night on its own, and I think it was also kind of stitched together, if I remember correctly. I saw it like either on TikTok or in a YouTube thing that was talking about different stuff. They had cut out a lot of the more uncomfortable clips and mm-hmm. mostly just focused on the villain and the special effects, and like mm-hmm. that. Oh yeah, I think changes how I think about that first segment. But I'm looking forward yeah. to talking about that, that one. There has also been made into a full-length movie yes it's called siren it came out in 2016 it's mm-hmm. with like the oh, the yeah. same actress and everything apparently i'm kind of interested have in you seen it, it. no nope. okay. no i just found out that it exists mm-hmm. i knew it existed but i did not i have not seen it and i did forget about it until the other night mm, but right. hey let's hit spoiler things so here's how we're going to do this episode this is our first uh is, or this is not our first anthology. This is our second anthology movie, uh, Mortuary Col- uh, Collection. Oh, shit, we just kind of ran it like a normal episode. Yeah, um, I did. I was not here for that one. So, but for this one, we're gonna try and take it bit by bit. So, um, I'm gonna start us with the frame narrative, tape 56, which was directed by Adam Wingard. I didn't actually write down who wrote most of these. Let me pull the um, 
IMDb. Oh yeah, the, I didn't uh, think to. Wikipedia. I wrote down who directed everything, but I didn't uh, write down who wrote. I know same. Ty West wrote and directed his own. I believe David Bruckner wrote Amateur Night as well as directing it. Uh, yeah. So okay, I got it now. So, tape fifty six. The uh, the framing narrative of the whole thing, directed by Adam Wingard, written by Adam Wingard and Simon Barrett. Um. A continuation of the spoiler free because the spoiler free was entirely contained within the tape 56 narrative. Um, tape 56 is used to intersperse, as we already said, and connect all the stories together. It's a guy sitting down on the floor in front of the dead guy in the chair watching the stack of cassette tapes in front of him yeah. or VHS cassettes, you know, and he's just like, um, the first tape ends and the guy is missing and someone else comes in and is like, Hey, where'd he go? Okay. Next tape. That tape ends and the body in the chair is missing and the guy is still there. Next tape, both or the body is back. The guy is missing. So on and so forth as people vanish from this movie. Um, eventually we get to the point of tape 56 where everyone has been picked off except for the group leader, Zach, who makes his way back upstairs and finds his dead friend in the hallway, uh, decapitated. And he doesn't really react in a way that you would think if you found your dead friend in the hallway. Yeah. It's almost like he's excited to have a new element of snuff tape or something weird like that because he does not react poorly. He's like, whoa, look at that. Yeah. Kind of thing. These guys are all just but, real, real fucked up clearly but then the dead guy uh is shown up and walking around uh, i believe he's supposed to be like a zombie type character um doesn't really matter because he pretty much does away with zach immediately after being shown standing there and the movie ends mm -hmm. there's a little bit of like action with them like shuffling around in the basement at one point because they found more tapes down there uh, which gave us the the great line of realizing these guys don't know what they're looking for. Yeah, they were just told you'll know it when you see it, which is um, why the theory of these guys were meant to die in this house holds a lot more weight than some other theories. Right, right. Because. Come on. Uh, but they yeah. do decide to just take every cassette in the house and walk. See, I thought that kind of thing really just played more into the subtext that like these guys are really stupid. In addition to being yes, the world's biggest pieces of shit, they were also really Oh, they got set up dumb. so easily. Yeah. Um, it's like, why would you take... Why like, would you take that job? And not ask any questions at all? Like, come on. Yeah, come on. And also, like, Ugh. when they're, like, out taking videos of them, like, assaulting women and stuff, they say that they get $50 each time they do that. Yeah. 50? That's so little. No, that's so little <laughs> that's money. The nothing. only thing grosser than the fact that they're doing it is the fact that they think $50 is worth it. Like, what the yeah. fuck, dude? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't like this, the framing narrative it's in awful. this movie. It's... I think that the idea of it works. I think that they do it better in the second movie. Uh -huh. I don't remember what they do in the third movie, but the second sure. movie is better. Yeah. And the, uh, what do you call the newer movies are also better at it. Uh -huh. It's because it's less grimy and gross. This is a very gross section of the movie. It feels and like some of it works. Yeah. Yeah. Like some of it, it works. The house itself being gross is fine. Makes the sense. breaking shit is fine. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, it just, it's literally just the beginning and they, beginning the, again, of the movie yeah. they, is the worst part. Not, not the only bad part of it, but right, like but, if they cut that out, I would have a lot less I, bad feelings toward this movie. So here's my here's my big thing with that shot. It's literally three minutes into the movie. It's the most uncomfortable thing ever. And I can't yeah. even tell you to just skip past it like we tried to say while we were watching it in this. Because during the credits, they repeat it over and over again. They repeat it during yeah. the opening five minutes over and over again. And here's the thing about an anthology where it's a bunch of different directors. You, It's like what my parents used to say to me about my behavior is I'm not just representing myself as a child when I misbehave. I'm mm. representing them too, yeah. the parents and their parenting. When you make your framing device that gross and disgusting, you're not just representing yourself and your like film that you're making. You are putting that 
onto every single other director and yeah. their shorts that is going to be in this anthology as well. And it does, as much as I want to like, in spite of the the same kind of gross stuff that happens in some of these other segments, it's wrapped up better than it is in this one. Yeah. Like it's the specifically thinking of Second Honeymoon. Mm. But like, but I can't because of how the framing narrative kind yeah. of coats everything in this blanket of misogyny. Even stuff later on is like absolutely ruined Tinged, by that. Yeah. Well, especially mm-hmm. when you know that the framing device was what they apparently what they came up with first. That's the inception of the movie was that. And everything mm-hmm. else I'm sure they is didn't tell built them off of that. I'm sure they didn't tell them, hey, we're going to have this scene and it's going to be repeated 50 times throughout the fucking, like I, at the beginning and at yeah, the end. Yeah, I want to give everyone else involved in the movie the benefit of the doubt and say may, maybe hopefully they didn't know that that was the way that that was all going to come out. But like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's something that I just wanted to say as we talk about the framing device is like that's not just like I can't take everything else at face value outside of the framing device because um, of that <laughs> and because knowing that because they all have a relationship with each other, they all know that guy. Yeah, Chris. <laughs> I mean, I think some of the shorts are just as uncomfortable. Agreed. Personally. No, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I, I so think that blood is on absolutely. those directors and yeah. writers' hands as well. But again, Without Second doubt. Honeymoon, I would love to like. I would love to like it for what it is and observe the gross things that happen in that one as being like part of the story. Oh, kinda. it's it's part of like the critique because we mm-hmm. see that again from Ty West in X. Yeah. Like it seems like some of that relationship stuff that is in Second Honeymoon is kind of like redone and readdressed in X um, and done better. But I can't because the whole movie's just so misogynist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. But that that's tape 56, um, the framing narrative. Yeah, which is... Um, I don't really have a rating for this. Like, one out of ten, I guess. Like, mm-hmm. it, I don't think it's fair to rate the framing narrative, but also it's bad, so one out I of ten. I think it is fair to rate the framing narrative because a good framing narrative should be, like, uh, good. You know, like in the mortuary I, see, collection, I would settle which for it just was being, very fun in its framing device. That was, you know? that was. I'd settle for the framing narrative just being in existence without being weird. They could have just popped in at the showing up at the house and some guy, and they're like, they have the camera in the car and the one guy's like, okay, so what are we here to do? You know, something like that. <clears throat> There mm-hmm. are so many other they ways didn't. to establish that these guys are complete pieces of shit. And if you want to also establish that they're stupid, there's other ways to do that without <laughs> graphic yeah. depictions of sexualized violence. Like, they don't yeah. have okay. to be the guys from A Clockwork Orange. They could be regular no. people more. <laughs> so, uh, rating the framing device, I'm giving the framing device a negative one because mm. it actively detracts from the rest of yeah the i can get with that it very actively I can very much wrecks get with the rest of the movie which could be so much better without it or just with a different one yeah at, at least the tone would have been maybe set but then this does accurately set the tone yeah. for some of the really shitty stuff that happens later so i don't know it just ruins it the tone sure for some of the less does. shitty stuff that happens mm-hmm. later yeah or taints yeah. the stuff that could be just weird and boundary pushing into being bad because of the uh, we we should move on to the next segment. Yeah. Oh, like. Did we get? Did we get? Did any, Emma, anyone else want to wrap? Would you like to this? also give this a zero to negative one to more? Uh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I can probably I can like a, as a, rating a negative one for sure. Yeah, I'm 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 down with changing mine to a negative one. Yeah, we all um, agree the framing device yeah. is terrible and it detracts from the rest. Tape fifty six. Adam Wingard uh, bums me out. Adam yeah. Wingard. Um, he was coming directed right... a few movies that I really like. Yeah, he was coming right off of making Your Next in this one because that was two thousand eleven. This is two thousand twelve. I love Your Next. I it's feel such a like good movie. I've seen it, but I don't remember. But he also made the and that's not more not recent, a problematic uh, movie. I remember liking it isn't good. It actually is good. I've watched it like five times. It okay. is something I remember clearly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he also uh, but, did the, uh, the more recent yeah. Blair Witch movie from uh, 2016. Oh, I remember hearing Among general other um, things. positive things about that. Mm-hmm. All right, next up, we have segment one. Um, this is the first tape that is watched. Uh, Amateur Night, written and directed by David Bruckner, also written by Nicholas Tikoski. 
Uh, we have three pre- if three friends prepare to hit the town after giving one of the members um, glasses with a hidden camera in them so that he can record all the hot ladies and stuff like that. Um, while hitting on women at the bar, an unsettling girl um, focuses on our POV camera boy telling him I like you several times. Her after, performance uh, they is all really call cool, her. I think. It yeah, is. I don't know if uh, I don't know if y'all saw, but she's actually in the background of several shots yeah. leading up to her actual introduction into the scene. Yeah, and she keeps like which I thought was very it, nice. Right? Yeah, just like dead stare. Yeah, it's pretty just great. Straight. Yeah, it's, I think that's very cool. Her um, performance is really good. But the group makes a scene and is kicked out of the bar. So they go back to the motel with the strange girl and another girl that they had hit it off with and picked up on the way. Um, the other girl does pass out while, um, they're about to have sex and the guy after a friend of his is like, Hey man, stop moves on to, um, glasses, boys, girl, the strange girl. I don't have a name for her. Uh, her Lily, Lily. Thank you so much. Yeah. They definitely never say that. I don't think so. No. Um, this makes uh, our POV character kind of uncomfortable, and he leaves the room and goes to the bathroom. It makes her visibly the uncomfortable third, as well. It Yes, Worth it very noting. much makes her uncomfortable. <laughs> yes. Um, no one here in this situation is happy except for the creepy weird dude who is forcing himself on her. Uh, and well, the second he, guy. Yeah, he mm-hmm. also tries to join in. Yes, he. Yeah. I was just about to say, he tries to join in and, and ends up no. joining glasses boy in the bathroom because he's been bitten he's got a big old bite mark on his hand he's like hey what the fuck was that glasses guy comes back out and he's like hey man maybe we should maybe we should stop this is a little bit weird i don't think that this is a good idea um however the group leader uh, is not willing to listen to that and he keeps trying to force the situation and lily kills him uh pretty violently pretty great a lot of blood um Yep. Very cool. Which leads our uh, POV guy to run back into the bathroom and hide along with the second guy. Uh, They both decide that they need to get out of there. um, But the second guy gets jumped uh, because he came out with a weapon to try and fight her off and get out the door. Uh, He gets jumped and killed and his dick is torn off. This is the dong short, by the way. We do see we see him naked come into the bathroom and then we see him jump off the bed in boxers, and then we see him come back into the bathroom naked. Mm-hmm. So just a, a fun little um, inconsistency there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, Glasses Boy manages to get away uh, with the the motel room is just a bloodbath at this point. But the girl is okay, as far as I know. Nothing bad happens to her. She was just passed out on the bed. Yeah. She's fine. So good for her. Um. But he ends up tripping and falling down some cement stairs, breaking his arm. And Lily catches up with him and she's like, hey, I like you. Uh, And then when she realizes he's not reciprocating that, she's like uh, very upset by this. And he tries to run away, but she transforms into a big old bat, grabs him and carries him away. Um, One thing I did forget to mention is when she's in the motel room after she's attacked the first guy, her face has split. Yeah. Uh, down the middle. Um, giving her this really like cool, creepy, like wide eyed. Her eyes look do to some her. like fucked up stuff as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's really cool. Cats and this is something. one of the times when the low resolution video really lends itself to making this work out because it's it's grimy, shitty glasses camera footage. Mm-hmm. And it really, really works to hide anything that isn't good. Well, also, you wouldn't, though, like, like, because it's well done makeup anyway. Yeah, it is. But also they like, but it, uh, yeah, they they kind of cover it up, not just by using the shitty camera quality, but also like the the transformation into a giant bat thing is never really actually shown. No, yeah, it's it just all that, happens like, off early camera. on. You see like something on her back that you could sort of imagine developing into wings and then she moves a particular yeah. way and you don't see her again and you hear wing flapping noises and you fill the gaps in like that's that's very yeah. cool as like a j- storytelling just through cues kind of thing you know mm-hmm. also did you notice yeah. the uh before her face splits open there's like a she has like line. a line going down the middle of her forehead yeah. down to the tip yeah. of her nose mm-hmm. yeah i saw that and 
while we were watching, I didn't want to bring it up to Piper because I was like, I don't know if that's just like something yeah. this actress has from like an incident when she was younger right, or something. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you don't want to be weird But it looks very it, natural. Yeah. 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 No, it looked good. But then when it her was... face splits open, you're like, oh. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. that was right there. All right. Oh. <laughs> I, this movie reminded me a lot of Spring uh, in Ooh. a lot of ways. Um, <laughs> and you loved Spring. I, I love the same things about this short that I love about Spring, which is Demon incredibly girl? cool <laughs> creature design. Yeah. And, and like monstrous girl who, yeah. um, and this one obviously ended better as well for her. Mm. Um, she managed to get out of there okay. Uh, but she also still fell for a wimpy asshole. Girl, you can do better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, same, same, same issues I had with Spring. Same pros as Spring. Cool creature effects. Cool creature idea. Um, same cons as Spring. Shitty dudes. <laughs> shitty shitty men i yeah, would, the the guys are really they are disgusting and they're the grossest and it's the problem is like um the reason that this one um to me it was super uncomfortable um i would but i think that um in having the monster do what she did it was more condemned than it like outrightly yeah. con like head-on condemned than it is in um in the framing device it also isn't shown as much um right, yeah. except they do with lily don't love that mm, yeah. um yeah. it's like that's super unnecessary we don't need to ah. do it we already know these guys are yeah. gross you've been making it very clear this whole time but yeah um yeah uh this one Love the creature effects. Love the um. Don't love the conceit. Don't love having to watch that, especially after the opening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This was a hard one, um, because like there's one or two of these shorts that don't really have as much violence against women. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But to go straight from hard essay into this one, which I would also argue has a yeah, hard yes. essay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it taints it, the it's, vibe it, of the entire movie. It's like, oh, yeah, so this it, is what it, this movie hard. is. And then the movie never proves you wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I like the creature of this one. I like how she's framed in a lot of the scenes. She's really creepy. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Where the second guy kind of comes out of the bathroom with a weapon. She's just in the darkness in this really weird pose. Yeah. It's very, um, oh, that was cool. oh, I love and that. And it's really creepy and like cool as he's like kind of facing her down. David God, Brooker like, has a really good eye for visual shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I would like this short a lot if the guys weren't such fucking yeah. gross I think like I've watched a lot of movies and mm -hmm. you have like gross guys that are like hate women or whatever, yeah. but this is just amping it up to 11. Yeah. Um, and I hate it a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. we're for the, like there, I don't think any of our listeners are going to be like this. I trust you guys. I know most of you personally. Um, but there are people out there who would be like, oh you guys are just like soft you guys just can't handle it like you guys are you guys are weak and it's like fuck you <laughs> yeah, yeah i don't give a shit i have openly said i'm not someone who's ever gonna watch a serbian film i'm not someone who's ever gonna watch that shit yeah. i don't and that's not a like character failing on anyone's part that they don't want to see that shit and that it makes them uncomfortable. And it's not a moral or like character trait for you to parade around if you mm -hmm. like this shit. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. like, cool, go like that miles and miles away from me, please. Yeah. As yeah. far yeah. away yeah. as you can possibly get. I'm not going to say you need to be arrested or anything because you watch these movies and potentially enjoy some of them. I don't want to be your friend. Sorry, yeah. not really, not really interested. Yeah, I'm interested yeah. in watching Siren because I think one thing that Amateur Night could definitely use is space to breathe. Yeah, because it's it's an awful lot of condensed 
hatred at these main characters I have. And yeah. I don't want to like the main characters. No, no. But, you but want I can only tolerate them, watching so much of them when all I feel is negative feelings toward them. Mm -hmm. I think giving this short some space to breathe could probably do it a lot of good. Also, not having it show immediately after the framing device, I yeah. think also could make it better. Yeah, yeah. I feel like okay. um, I feel like I, I I keep finding myself thinking that I like this segment by accident because I like her and her design and her performance so much that like in yeah. my mind it's almost counteracting how gross the rest of it is and i would really like to just get more of that more of her without necessarily mm -hmm. more of all the other stuff i'm willing yeah. to say that i do like this segment because i don't hate the segment yeah um it's definitely not one of the ones in this that i dislike but that being said it's not one of my top two segments mm -hmm. by any means. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we do. So we should probably talk about the second one. Now. Yeah, we got to move on. Uh, I would agree. Can I can I say yeah. two quick things? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, one is I think visually this is the hardest one to watch because the camera is at its oh, shakiest it's and so shittiest bad. quality yes. here. A hundred percent. Perhaps. And also, this was directed by the same guy who did the new Hellraiser. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and uh, also The Ritual, which is another movie yeah. full of really cool visual shit that I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. This guy kills a body horror. Yeah, he's yes. just, um, there's stuff that he is real, real good at. Um, Just one more real quick thing about this before we move on. Yes. Um, Throughout, it reminded me a lot of this movie from 2015 that I watched years and years ago that's called Jerusalem with a Z. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it is I also you me about found footage styled. It is framed around the uh, camera attached to the glasses thing because it was back when like everyone thought Google Glass was going to be the big thing. You remember that? Yep. Um, oh, yes. That, that brief, brief period. Um, and it features a scene at the ending that is just like the ending of this one where the like the person wearing the glasses gets like picked up and flown away. And I'm mm. pretty certain that they stole it from this. <laughs> that's hilarious yeah they do it that, a little bit differently uh in jerusalem spoils for spoilers for jerusalem with a z because it's 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 bad it's not worth watching don't waste your time on it um at the end of that one the main character is actually the one who gets transformed into the demon thing and you don't get to see the transformation because she's the one wearing the glasses you're just hearing sounds yeah. and then she starts to fly away and there's some guy like watching her and the camera just keeps going like higher up into the sky until the glasses fall off of her. And the ending is the one cool part of that movie. And it's oh, cool. So it is and just it's a direct fully off. ripped from this movie. So <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. All right. Yeah. Ne next segment. Segment two. Segment two. Second honeymoon directed by Ty West written also and by Ty written West. by Ty West. Yeah. Exclusively. This is a Ty West production. Yeah. Uh, Sam and Stephanie are a married couple traveling to Arizona for their honeymoon, filming the whole time. In a little cowboy town, uh, they find a fortune-telling machine that looks like a prospector. Um, the fortune that Stephanie receives is she'll be re reunited with a lost love and that she's too trusting. Yeah. Which I think is a really funny little pairing, personally. It's like, hey, you're gonna find somebody you trust too much. Thumbs up. Um... At the motel that night, a woman comes up to the door and asks Sam to give the give her a ride the next day. The couple's kind of confused and concerned about this. Uh, they don't really know why this happened, uh, but they end up going to bed rather than calling the cops or anything because they don't really want to make a huge scene. Um, while they're asleep, somebody sneaks into the room, uh, pulls down the sheets and like kind of stares at Stephanie for a little bit. And then steals $100 from Sam's wallet and dips his toothbrush in the toilet. Uh, the next day, Sam uh, is brushing his teeth. We see him brushing his teeth with the nasty toilet toothbrush. And he's like, why did you steal money out of my wallet? And makes some weird comment about how it wouldn't be the first time she's helped herself to his money to treat herself. Yeah. They go and they like hang out, do some activities that day. And then that night... While they're asleep, the person comes back and kills Sam. And while washing up in the sink, 
Uh, Stephanie comes up and they start to make out together. Surprise. It's the lover that she's going to be reunited with. Surprise. Um, the girl that came to ask for the, yep, the, the ride. The girl that asked Same for the person. ride. Um, they run away together and the segment ends with Stephanie asking if uh, she the girl had actually erased the footage on the camera yet or not. And since we have the footage, the answer is clearly no, which I think there's the uh, too trusting angle. I agree. Mm. I think that was the like the too trusting oh, thing. Okay. Yeah, I was yep. kind of trying to make um, sense of that. There's a lot of stuff uh, this... in this one that like happens and is mentioned early on that like kind of feels like it just doesn't come back. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, this short also very rapey and gross. Yeah, um, yeah, mm-hmm. dude. Because dude's very, very, the... very disrespectful. This one was out of the out of the three we've mentioned so far. This one hit me the hardest. Mm. Yeah. Um, super uncomfy. Yeah. Uh, uh, the guy is trying to film. Sam is trying to film Stephanie as she's undressing and is very, very, very pushy about it. It's mm-hmm. super uncomfy to watch. Um, and he's the... also like super fucking d- juvenile about it. The way he talks is like he's a, like a like he's a fucking little kid. Yeah, it's pathetic. Yeah, literally, like, it would be I... it would be pathetic mm. if it wasn't so gross. Like it's both. It yeah. can be and is both. It's it's so disgusting. Um, and I think this was the point where I turned to Noah and I was like, we're three for three. Is this going to be the whole movie? <laughs> right. And then it was the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. And the whole time I'm like, I swear I don't remember it being like this. The entire movie, I had to keep saying that yeah. over and over because I legitimately, also, firstly, would have definitely probably not selected this as our next movie with zero warning. Sure. Um, I definitely would have at least given you guys a heads up or pushed it off into the future. Also, um, for the listeners, if mm-hmm. I had felt uncomfortable to the point of not watching this, you would not be listening to this episode right now. I just want to put that out there. I would have stopped if I like felt the need to. Yeah. I didn't. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that other people won't, but I did yeah. watch it all the way through and I and because I wanted to have this discussion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So because to me, I do think it's important to talk about this kind of movie though, so that mm-hmm. when we talk about stuff like X mm. and stuff that and like Fresh that discusses this stuff, um, we can all also like have this kind of like baseline for what horror used to be more because mm. it did used to be this when i first like met noah and was talking to him i said i hated horror and that's because at the time this kind of movie is a lot of what i associated with horror was like stuff like this or it's just kind of gross and misogynist mm-hmm. um so it's one of those things where, like, yes, I want to be able to watch and discuss the good VHS movies. I don't think that it's, like, necessarily a great idea to just be like, oh, the first one's bad. We're not going to discuss it. Let's move on. Or even to talk about directors like Ty West and David Bruckner, who we like yeah. their stuff and enjoy. Yeah. But we can't ignore that they also put out stuff like this. It, yeah. We can be critical of, like, stuff in Second Honeymoon and in Amateur Night while still enjoying X and Pearl and the ritual and stuff like that. Um, and hell and the new Hellraiser. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. like, it, it was 2012. I can, I am personally open to people changing and growing sure. a lot, but I think that it would be unhealthy to ignore also that they made these things. Right. Um, yeah. Just, yeah, that's my big soapbox. So. And I, yeah. I wonder if yeah. perhaps we would be, perceiving a lot of these segments differently like we said earlier if they if it just didn't have the super gross framing device leading into I it i wonder like, about that a lot i i think we'll a lot never of these know, would feel but... very differently isolated mm-hmm. 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 i agree it, uh, but unfortunately they're not isolated yeah yeah can't yeah because about that second honeymoon is one that i feel more good feelings toward yeah than some of the other segments um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give my placing in the the grand hierarchy of rankings for it yet. Um but I definitely don't feel badly about it. Yeah. Um, like I do the framing narrative, and I feel less badly about it than I do the first one. And mm-hmm. I think if it if we didn't get if Second Honeymoon by itself, I think is pushy and uncomfortable, but not as bad as i feel like i think of it 
with the shadow of the other two looming yeah. over top of it. Mm-hmm. You know After what I mean? watching the first two, this one was very uncomfortable, but I feel like on its own. And there are a couple shots I think I would remove to make it a better like overall experience. Like how long the boyfriend tries to pressure her into undressing, no, for example? No, I think, I, genuinely, I think that to make me feel good about his death, um, that was a really effective scene. Yeah. Okay. Um, the scene where the girlfriend is in mm. their room in the middle of the night stealing shit and mm-hmm. she is equally sexually creepy to Stephanie. Yeah, seems yeah. unnecessary. Did not love that. Seems very it's unnecessary. Yeah. It seems unnecessary it's, it, it, because it is. It might, it might be like, oh, thematically she's going out of the frying pan into the fire. She's too trusting. She thinks she's found a, a salvation from this bad relationship. And that that's another angle. Which yeah. is something that could be said. But like, yeah, I didn't, eh, eh, so it's just like, can we, can we, at that point I was very tired. I was worn out. I was like, can we just stop? And then it didn't stop. But yeah. Yeah. Not even the halfway point of the movie. (laughs) Yep. I do Uh, love the kill scene though. Oh, the kill scene's good. The kill scene's pretty good. The kill's very good. Oh, um, what is this? Sam, uh, is played by Joe Swanberg. Isn't he? Yes. Oh, that's him? Joe Swanberg, the director of Sick Thing That Happened to Emily is play Sam in this short. Oh, huh. yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that, that's Joe. Whack. All right. Mm-hmm. So. Cool. I don't, know. I, I don't know. Emma, you have anything to say about this one? Or anything I thought more? it was just as gross as the others. Yeah. I, I think that I there's a world in which, like, personally, I could restructure this one to like it. Yeah. But it's still mm-hmm. just, like, unnecessary. Um, um, oh, we forgot to give a rating for Amateur Night. Um, oh, right. What's our one to ten on Amateur Night? One for special effects. Okay. I was going to give it like a three. I'm about a one as well. Okay. Uh, I want to rate it more because I like the visual effects and the performance from the actress who plays Lily enough, but like uh, it's it's still really not a fun watch. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it like a... uh, I'm going to go high and say that I'm going to give it a five. Okay. And for Second Honeymoon... I mm. one. I'd I'm never lost. watch it again. I'm not gonna. I, like I Ty I, Ty West. Uh, I'm. I Ty West has come, released better movies. I believe since that Ty this. West has come along. Ty West way, released so better really... movies before this as well. Mm-hmm. That is probably this was true. after I, House of the Devil, which I've heard great things about. Yeah. No. This is a one. Didn't like it. Uh, I said some positive things during the review, but I did not enjoy this one. Fair enough. I am also a one. All right. I was going to hit this one with a three, maybe four. Yeah, I feel like that that Got feels it. right to me because I, I feel like it's a little better than some of the other ones in this. But uh, at the same time, once again, <laughs> distinctly unfun. <laughs> and there's so many things about it that I just don't really get why they're in there. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, the like one on the, this one the was thing for is, lesbians. It's, it's what, like 15 minutes long and it's got so much runtime padding. That's ridiculous. Yeah, no, it's like, definitely really padded. Apart from like, you know, the the scene where they go to the Grand Canyon, which of course, you know, is a visual representation of the space between them and their relationship. That's good. That's symbolism, you know? And then she should have pushed him. <laughs> and there was a red light in the Grand Canyon exactly. symbolizing the danger of the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Exactly. The, the, the Grand Canyon so is speaking, a dangerous place. <laughs> speaking of padding, let's talk about the next one because I think there's, there, there's oh an opposite issue with the second one. So segment Tuesday three, the Tuesday the 17th, uh, written and directed <laughs> by Glenn McQuaid. Uh, mm, can't wait to talk about this. Glenn McQuaid, mostly, uh, most IMD credits, uh, I, sorry, I can talk. Most of his IMDb mm-hmm. credits are visual effects work and writing. This is like one of the only things that he has directed. Okay. Good to know. So um, this one is four friends are on their way to their brand new friend Wendy's yearly vacation spot in the middle of the woods. Each friend was told they were the only one being invited. As they travel, Wendy acts very strangely, uh, refuses to elaborate on why everyone was told that they were the only one also going to be there. And at one point also mentioning everyone there was going to die. Um, While they're hanging out a little later uh, next to a pond, Wendy mentioned that her friends were all killed here some years ago and then tries to play it off as a joke again. This is actually all the friends asked why she said that they were all going to die. Oh, yeah. Straight up asked, hey, remember earlier when you said we were all going to die? What was what up, was with, up that? with that? And then, oh, yeah, all my friends were killed here. Um, 
eventually all of the friends after Wendy plays it off as a joke again, uh, all of her friends are killed by a glitchy guy who cannot be filmed properly. Uh, Wendy had brought them back as bait to try and lure him out and kill him herself because she was mad about her friends dying. Yeah. Um, Wendy manages to injure him, but an earlier line from the short of people didn't believe me when I said he can be in two places at once came back to bite her in the ass when he was in two places at once and killed her. Oh my God. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, Jeff, with respect to the fact that you enjoy Tuesday the 17th. I liked it. I think this short sucks ass it is not you're fucking wrong it's, and you are a, i think it's I think really you are funny. a hypocrite and a coward i've sat on this one long enough that it's now funny to me um but uh another i want to note we are not getting away from the sexual stuff here there yes. is still are more voyeurism oh we haven't mentioned every single one of these shorts as well has had a theme of women being filmed against their consent oh, yeah. and yes. recorded against their consent yeah. Ev the fr all all of them up until this point have had this um mm. so that's super fun that happens again here uh one of the characters her only character trait which this is a satire of slashers so i will play mm. that into it her only character trait is that she's a she's a like and i say this with air quotes slut um so that's super fun that they did that as well uh yeah so other things yeah, about this, this one though this one's not as overtly sexual and gross as the others. There's mm -hmm. some guy nudity. Mm -hmm. um, ass. Yeah, ass. But you get a lot of man ass. Yeah. The, the guys still have a conversation where they're filming the, the girls kind of walking ahead of them. Yeah, and they're saying some, And one of them's like, things. the only reason I'm here is to, is to fuck that one, basically. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's gross. It's like, um, why couldn't you just have kept their characterization to the Barracuda fly? clip that would have been fine i would have been sad when they died a yeah. fly. <laughs> the fly um, so it was also yeah because so earlier they all like questioned what do you mean we're all gonna die what are you talking yeah. about but then also there's another awkward segment in the car where all of them reveal that the main girl had invited them each individually and they were like, oh, it's just going to be us yeah, two. Yeah, under and then, pretenses. All like it was them. all of them. And yeah. they were like, yeah, what was up with that? And, and she's just like, then they just, they she's just like, drop like it that. entirely. Yeah. And I'm like, Although actually the... I'm like, that combined with you're all going to die. Yeah, like, I'm like, can you turn the car around or just drop like, me off, Just please? leave. I'm not going to get in the fucking lake at that point. No. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, so weird. can I explain why I like this one so much? Yeah, go for sure. it. Is it the really bad acting? Because the acting is no, also let, atrocious. Let them, let them talk. It's just, away, it's sorry. just a really fast Friday the Thirteenth movie. It is a very fast. It is all the events of a Friday the Thirteenth movie, just with all the space taken out. That is a major mm -hmm. complaint I have with the Friday the Thirteenth movie. They have too so much space put, put like into them. Yeah, like this There's is just this is the much. best possible execution of one. They show up, you get a little bit of establishing character stuff. They smoke a little weed and immediately get murdered. Like, what more you want? I I want a little bit of breath to care about the characters a little bit more. Why would you want to care much about like these characters? With amateur no, night, <laughs> I don't want to care about these characters because these characters suck ass. Yeah, they're distilled to their most basic trope. And it hurts the short for me. It is, it's a satire. What, what is that? What is that? Um, uh, satire without the clarification uh, makes you just as bad as the bad guys or whatever the hell people throw around every now and then. This is just a bad short for me because it is too condensed. It's too fast. And it doesn't, the decisions are made that don't make sense, which is yes. All of these are classic Friday the 13th. Well, and but I don't like shit. Friday the 13th mm -hmm. on fast forward. I simply don't. I think if there was more room to breathe, her saying he will be in two places at once and then forgetting five minutes later, would it would work better if there were more events in between the statement I mean, yeah. and then when she gets well, but marked also, for forgetting it. Also, though, just humor me mm -hmm. on this one. This is also I'm a movie humoring. getting made by a person who most of their credits are visual effects stuff, which is historically mm -hmm. how an awful lot of slashers are. Where they're kind okay. of made for the effects and such. If this I may is say, not so you different also from said something like Splinter he has a lot of writing or, credits. Uh, a handful, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of an even split visual effects and writing credits. But like, 
it, it kind of feels to me like like this movie is made around the fuzzy glitchy boy. It's an excuse to show him because they had a cool visual yeah. effect that they wanted to use. And everything else is just kind of padding to be able to do that. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. agreed. I do not disagree with that statement at all. But I also think that that is a bad thing. I don't think I don't. this one <laughs> is... In the context of the other shorts, mm -hmm. I don't think this one is bad or good. I just think it's kind of there. Yeah, it really is just there for me. Um, I'm not a slasher person, so I don't enjoy in a my, super parody to it. I am alone. In my ranking of the in, of the shorts, it's higher up than a lot of others because it doesn't have as much overt, right, yeah. gross sexual shit. Um, and that's what it has going for me. I liked some of the some of the stuff where like the uh, here's another thing, R E get just turn around and leave if the film is specifically glitching to show dead bodies at the location that you are in and your reaction is hey what's wrong with this film <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was it's yeah so funny. You, i hate that i'm coming around on this short because it's now just kind of funny to it, me no that's where i am exactly. i'm like this is legitimately well, just like... god damn it it's just <laughs> it, so here's it's just a fast slasher, I, that's it. Like, no one can tell you I hated this when we first watched it. But Nita like, despised it. But like getting distance from it I, and like looking back on how how all the other ones went, this one uh, is so funny. I really right like down to the part one. where she's like, oh, the other two left. Do you want to have sex with me in the lake right now? And he's just like, <laughs> we weren't kidding about the murders, were you? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Now I'm coming around on this. I'm not happy about this, I, Jeff. I need you to understand I am not happy about okay. this. Okay. I, gonna rate it? I love I just I love the look of the glitchy boy. Whatever his name is. The look is very good. He's from what you uh, get of him, you just get kind of this glitchy silhouette where his head is kind of red and the rest of him is all just like flat black. And the way that the mm -hmm. visual effect works, sometimes it looks like he's just walking up out of like nothing. And I think that's very cool. He looks There are really very cool, cool scenes in okay. this. Before we move on, I want to tell you guys something very funny. I've been looking up the ta the Tumblr tags for these shorts as we go just to oh see if no. there's any like cool like clips. There is a psych episode titled Tuesday the 17th and that is the oh, it's oh, yeah. it's season 3 episode 15 yeah. and that is the only thing I can find. I wonder when so, I wonder if that came out before or after this. Let's find out. I don't remember when Psych was airing. It's been so long since I watched that show. I feel like I remember watching that episode actually. Season cause... three was two thousand and nine. Oh, so this. Hey. <laughs> anyway, and that's so specific. You could have picked Tuesday the any other day of the, of the month. Well, but um, like, any... yeah, Tuesday the seventeenth would be the one that follows a Friday the thirteenth. Is the thing. Uh yes. True. That's a good point. Pick Wednesday the eighteenth. Mm, <laughs> there we go. Uh. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's do a rating for this one. I think it's like an eight, personally. I really like it, but... I think... I'm gonna do, like, a three. I think this one is hurt again by the framing. I was not yeah. set up for a tongue-in-cheek slasher parody. Mm. Yeah, this one is hurt by the Which fact is... that they didn't communicate yeah. as a, like, group. This was made for I a think. different anthology movie. <laughs> yeah. Um... Because my initial number was going to be two. I enjoyed this one so much less than even my complaints with the other ones. I enjoyed this one less. Thinking of it as a joke, I'm willing to give it a four. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll be straight up. But I'll, I'd give this one a five. Congratulations. All right. Nina, I still have to come around. They who it. hate slashers yeah. gives this a five. Because it's, it's like an ironic five. <laughs> Okay. It's five. Okay. I don't mean it. It's my like, wrong. <laughs> also, just why? Is, why is the one like dweeby dude? Why is his name Spider? What the fuck? Yeah, right? this, he cool. also has Come that on, this like middle class Christian kid ass scene where he's like, "I don't do drugs because they're all like smoking weed." Oh my god, weed, that was also And they're so all funny. laughing at him yeah. like, "Did he just call it drugs?" <laughs> <laughs> That's that was, like that so such good. a 2012 thing, right? though. I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. Um. I think we've come a long way in weed being accepted into more of a popular mainstream yeah. Yeah. of comfort and talking about yeah, it. It sounds like what I, I was saying just... around that time. So, 
Yeah, this could have just been because of my religious upbringing and the communities I was a part of, but like yeah, I same. Uh, the culture of 2012, I totally understand <laughs> yeah. there being characters that are like, um, no, I I don't do that. Grass is uh-uh. for mowing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh my fucking also, god! I'm also, I would no. again the fucking barracuda fly clip um, was yeah. definitely just the actors fucking around. Absolutely, yeah. I Absolutely. love a good old actors fucking around yeah. clip, and, and like, like that was peak. I I feel like with the the particular flavor of dumb stuff that those guys say, I felt like they were people I knew. Yeah, yeah. the fly barracuda. I was, was like, this feels like a real interaction. Yeah, like this is just, <laughs> yeah. it's just guys being dudes, you know? <laughs> Should I eat it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, also, does. don't eat, don't, don't, don't eat, eat random bugs. bugs. No. Mm. Even if um, you think it's a fly, because it's like, it's, yeah. barracuda flies are known to yeah. carry all kinds of weird diseases. I don't know if you all heard about this, but there was um, this teenager who um, was at like a party. And uh, there's a bunch of teenagers getting drunk and somebody dared him to eat a worm. And so he ate this worm and then um, went into a coma for like 10 years and then died. Whoa. Holy shit. Yeah. From eating a worm? Uh, Yeah. Uh, Do not eat random things. What the fuck? (laughs) You got it. PSA. Was there something weird about that? particular worm or like i don't i don't know just suddenly, like bacteria and yo, germs and everything i'm having flashbacks like, to this book on tape i listened to called how to eat fried worms no thank uh, you years that and years ago horrible i mean if you wash and cook whatever it's probably I fine couldn't do it. There, there's a scene things. where they okay, i'm reading that it. it was I okay it. i have to i have to add clarifiers to the worm story which still please do not eat worms okay but he it was a slug. Oh, God a slug. damn! Okay, and he was, and it was in Australia. Oh, this okay. guy's just so it, stupid. He had it coming. I would okay. never touch a slug. No way. Are you I would kidding? never touch oh, a slug. It did have a parasite in it. That is why ah, it, it. um Okay, it was making me think yeah. of like you know like really weird shit. Like you ever read about prion diseases? Yeah. Yeah, I try not to. Yeah, he ate a slug. I don't like thinking about. Yeah, them. horrifying. Yeah. You know what I Speaking do like thinking about diseases. About, yeah. Oh, Sick the transition. Oh, right. oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. Good job, Emma. <laughs> All right. Uh, segment four: the sick thing that happened to Emily when she was younger. Directed by Joe Swanberg and written by Simon Barrett. Simon Barrett, who uh, also helped write Tape Fifty Six. Oh, great! Yep. Thanks, Simon. Oh, <laughs> really appreciate that one. <laughs> Yeah. Emily and James are long distance boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, and this entire short is shown through a screen recorded video call uh, from Joe's side. And Joe is like uh, or the, not Joe, the uh, least James, I mean. invested that any boyfriend has ever been in a relationship. The worst boyfriend on planet Earth, Joe or James. Which James. luckily um, does have narrative reasons yes. there are narrative reasons i was bugged by that while watching the show the whole and time i was just like yep. god damn could he be paying less attention like wow um emily is having strange experiences and um it is implied that this has happened to her before but um not when she hangs out with james only when she is away from james does she have these bad things happen um she thinks her house is haunted by the ghost of a dead child and she'll call James at late hours of the night uh, to be like, hey, look at this. This is what's happening. Uh, and every single time something happens, James conveniently forgets to record the screen uh, to share the video back with her. Um, eventually, the hauntings ramp up until she ends up being knocked out by them. And James is revealed to be very close by. It honestly, it almost seems like He's in the next room. He is so close. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's supposed to be that close by or what. Yeah. Um, but he comes out into the room to assess what happened to her. And uh, the children who are revealed to be aliens. Um, he's just like, hey, how much longer does she need this tracking device in her arm? Because she was complaining about a weird bump she could feel moving around in her arm. And then she cut um, her arm open. Yeah. She tried to dig it out with a 
like, like a, a giant like meat fork. Yeah. Yeah. Very fucked up. Very fucked up scene. She's yeah. super casual. Incredibly about uncomfortable well. to watch. Yes. Yes. Um he ends up cutting her back open and pulling this weird alien baby out from inside her saying, so you're telling me this thing's part human? Yeah. Um, hands the alien baby off to the aliens and says, well, I'm going to have to break some bones to make this look like an accident again. Um, and the next time they're in a chat, Emily, um, who is now very badly injured, believes she wandered into traffic in a fugue state. She says that the doctor James recommended her uh, go see diagnosed her as schizoaffective and says that James deserves to be with a better, more normal girlfriend. James assures her that she's the only person he wants to be with, uh, but does not say I love you back after she very tearfully says I love you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, He just like stonewalls her there. Call ends and then he gets a new video chat with a different woman who has the same bump on her arm and thinks that James is her her boyfriend. Um, and it's uh, the reveal that aliens are using multiple people as incubators. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the real horror of this short is gaslighting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of gaslighting in this one. Mm-hmm. I um, um, but honestly, this is probably like the one one of the creepier ones mm-hmm. when yes. i say yeah. that this movie has some good like scary parts or like mm-hmm. actual scary stuff um this is the main one i think of yeah yes. yeah like um, on a conceptual standpoint this is just really like Ugh. yeah yeah this, i think this one's up there for me out of the this. the little ghost kids or whatever alien kids or whatever the fuck they are mm-hmm. uh, that yeah, haunt this it's apartment. never really made actually um, clear not in the show. Yeah, I, I hate the little alien twist at the end. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. That's just really fucking weird and kind of out of left a weird field. Choice, but, I would have preferred um, if the aliens were actually just child actors and it was a government thing over actual aliens, if we're being honest. Maybe. Yeah. But, but like the kid ghosts creeping around, like at one point they're on a video call and one like runs into the room and then slams the door mm-hmm. like that that's creepy yeah mm-hmm. um and it was cool but but yeah this one has some like the self-mutilation where she's just casually cutting open her arm trying to find whatever it is that's under her yeah. arm mm-hmm. and the guy is just like what are you doing why are you why are you doing <laughs> yeah and so, i'm like, like emily, emily don't, don't what do the that f- <laughs> Put iodine on that or something. or something. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck is this reaction? Yeah, he's so nonplussed about absolutely everything. I literally, like, he's not yeah, even pretending I'm so to give that... a shit at any point. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And they um, mentioned that he's, I liked it because they mentioned that he's, he, like, her, she mentioned that she's known him since they were kids. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that he, his parents were in the military or something, which I think yeah. does make this like military related mm. what he's doing. I kind of liked yeah. that little world building there. Um, this yeah. one's got a lot of depth to it. It just doesn't give you a whole lot of anything outright. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. also it's in the context. So I feel like this story is the short is interesting and like neat, but also, why do we need to have both women that he's talking to be like, oh, let me show you my Yeah, tits. why is that necessary? Yeah. He's That's, also so like, uninterested why is that in there? that. He's not even he's interested so in the boobs. Yeah. He doesn't like, tell them to do that. He's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> he seemed more interested in the second girl than he was in Emily. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, he was, just like, he was still very <laughs> wooden, yeah. but like, he did seem marginally more interested. Yeah. Yeah, this this one's nudity is consensual, but it's still extremely unnecessary and takes away from the overall yeah. experience. Well, for it's me. it's also mm-hmm. under deception, which is not you know. Yeah. Also, uh, he keeps lying to her about recording things, which I think is really good. Uh, like mm. for the story, yeah, he keeps. Mm-hmm. She's like, you need to be recording this. You need to be recording this. I. Like, oh shit! I keep forgetting. Something that kind of confuses me though is mm-hmm. they the two of them make reference to an earlier incident with her and Mm -hmm. when he's talking to the i guess they're aliens at the end he says 
what, how many times are you going to have to do this? Cause I don't know if her body can take it. And it, it kind of lends the impression that he's done this for them before, right? That this is kind of a consistent yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. But then when mm-hmm. he pulls it out, he says, you're telling me part of this thing is human as though he doesn't like know anything as though it's the first time. Yeah. As yeah, if this is his first that's just time. shitty writing. Yeah, yeah. Like, is this a mm-hmm. consistent thing for him or is this the first time? Like, I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. That. It bums me out that they had that moment of him looking at the camera and saying, This is not a human baby. Yeah. It's like we can tell you took it out of her back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, there's we we could definitely tell that this was a weird situation. If you'd Thank made you, the though. kids look more alien, maybe that could have been your Yeah, shorthand. they just don't more, it's like, framed as though it's ghosts at first, and they look as though they're ghosts yeah. at first. And then we see mm-hmm. them in good lighting and they're just like some people sitting on a couch. Yeah. If they had, if the weird alien baby had had some tentacles or something and he had said, I still can't believe even part of this is human. That the line is fixed. You just solved the fucking mystery. Good job. Or even just saying that without the baby design changing, because it looked like a kidney, you know, like, you just anything instead of you're telling me, you're telling me a shrimp fried this rice. Like, you know, like, (laughs) <laughs> like come on yeah I just <laughs> oh my god yeah no uh once again per- perhaps the most upsetting like conceptually here but like mm-hmm. it still just has some issues yeah we ready to give it's, this one a know. number it's i am i am emma um i'll give this one like a four Ooh, okay yeah oh I was I was gonna slap this one with like a, a six or a seven. Oh, okay. Because I don't know, it's creepy. And this when this one came on, somewhere in my notes I put finally a good segment. Mm. Mm, right. Um <laughs> like Tuesday so, yeah. the seventeenth just wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the bathroom for like fifteen minutes and I came back and suddenly we were at the the sick thing that happened to Emily when she was younger and I don't know what happened. I gotta be honest though, if there is a movie that you can that you could convince me you can just walk out of for 15 minutes and come back and not have missed anything. This is the one, right? Yeah. Like true. If yeah. you take any 15 minute block out of this movie, it's like, well, that doesn't really affect the the thing as a whole. <laughs> the experience. No. Um, yeah. My rating for this one, this is the most normal horror anthology experience out of all of them. Cause this is what I expect from a horror anthology is a short that's kind of half baked doesn't like has some things that maybe could have been worked through a little more to make things tighter overall has some creepy concepts but doesn't fully stick the landing Mm. so this one's going to be like a unironic five or a six yeah i feel like a five feels right i don't like it but it is well done and it is good at what it does apart from the Mm -hmm. the the issue the slight issues that i have that i mentioned like, it, it mm-hmm. does well at what yeah. it's doing. Do I like it? No, but, like, it's good. Hmm. All right. Segment five. 10, 31, 98 by Radio Silence. Um, just for... Yeah. Uh, um, they uh, wrote and uh, directed, but also Justin Martinez is also credited. Yeah. And uh, I don't the know Radio Silence is, guys are so. also the ones who made Ready or Not. Yep, which this that's podcast another thing I was going to definitely make. They also make. made the new Scream mm-hmm. movie that just came out, and they are yep. the ones which, making the next one. Yeah, uh, you have not seen it yet, I but I think I'm safe to say the other three of us enjoyed the new Scream, right, right Emma? Yep, yep, I liked it. So, yeah, same guys. I think Radio Silence does some really great stuff. Like uh, excited to see more work from them. And I'm happy to say this is our first short without sex stuff in yeah. it. Yeah. It is. It's my favorite. In the no whole sex movie. stuff in this one. No, it is mm-hmm. still women being victimized. Yeah, but yeah. but but this one's evil. So have you considered? She's right. only she's being possessed very clearly. Right, so but let let's me... get through the synopsis. Right. Yeah. As our excuse for having a camera, a man is dressed as a nanny cam for a Halloween party. That is the worst one yet, and I love it. Right. <laughs> also, it's right. so unapologetic. It has this weird, like, non sequitur friends filming uh, at their cookout where they forgot tongs and they're using styrofoam plates to pick up hot dogs from the grill. Yeah. Um, and it's really not. It's just this fun little, like. Yeah, I think it's just to show that these guys are friends who do things separately at this. Yeah. 
Okay, so there's a there's a few moments in this that um I think part of the idea was trying to show that they are reusing old cassette tapes. Right, yeah. Uh old yeah, VHS tapes. I need to stop saying cassette shorts. tapes. Uh old VHS tapes. Yeah, it happens a little bit in tape 56 at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then uh, to make it, it happens more gross. again. Yes, to make it more gross. But now it happens again here where it just kind of looks like someone slotted in a new one or a uh, an old tape that they're filming over. Yeah. So, you know. Um, let's see. Um they're all going to a Halloween party. The guy's dressed as a nanny cam and the other three there's like a pirate, a pirate, um, a marine, and guy. the unibomber. Yep. <laughs> yeah, pirate, marine and unibomber. <laughs> Um, off the air, uh, costume party. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Another joke that only N64 will get. <laughs> anyway, um, so they finally end up finding the house they think they are supposed to be at because no one can remember the address. They just know it's on an M road. They find a great big house that has all the lights on. They go inside and it is dead empty. There's nothing happening. So they drop all the beer off in the fridge and they start just poking around the house. They get scared because there's a couple of like big loud bangs and stuff. There, lights. And the house is legitimately creepy. Yeah, there's flickering lights. The house seems to be guiding them upstairs. Uh, doors are opening and letting them through areas. Uh, and they think that this is just a whole planned yeah. haunted house moment and they're having a blast with it. I've actually got more on this um, when we get to the end, just so that. Excited yeah. to hear. Um, there is one moment where our nanny cam sees a empty chair, looks in the mirror, sees a lady in the chair, looks back and there's no one in the chair. Uh, but eventually they hear some, uh, chanting and yelling from upstairs, a little call and response for you churchgoers, if you will. Uh, and they find the stairway up to the attic in a bathroom, which I think is a great design choice personally. (laughs) I love that there's attic stairways in the bathroom. Such an old house type of thing. Um, They go upstairs and they see this ritual happening. A lady's tied up between two posts while these guys are just like chanting. And I don't know. Are they whipping her? I don't actually. I don't think they are. The one guy's like reading out of a book and quoting Mm -hmm. like scriptural stuff. And then everyone else is chanting cast you down when he gets to the part where he says cast you down. It's supposed Mm -hmm. to be an exorcism, apparently. Yeah. And, uh, but our, our, our good old boys, um, pirate, marine, nanny cam and Unabomber are all like, <laughs> cast you down. Like they're on they the prices, the right? And they just chant along with it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So good. They have a blast. Uh, they're having a grand old time with this. And then they're like, why are you here? Get the fuck out of the house. But they interrupted the ritual <laughs> and a couple of guys get sucked up into the ceiling and our boys run. They are having a bad time. Yeah. Um, but then they hear the lady scream. Once they get down to the front door, they hear her scream. So they're like, well, well, we can't just leave her here. So they go right back up and, uh, end up getting the other two guys up there killed, but they rescue the lady. And as they try to exit the house, um, the doors and windows start closing. And this is a time when poor camera quality helps poor effects, I think, because as the doors window closes like it's a door yeah. like a garage door uh you it doesn't look that bad there's a mm-hmm. couple of bad cg yeah, moments like, the, like there's uh some floating dishware yeah, and stuff yeah. like that but also like just the um, way but, that like the the corners of the door are like sealing together with the wall and stuff like mm-hmm. it looks kind of cool yeah thing yeah it the does. door starts to seal uh hands are reaching out of the walls that look very yeah. good um yeah. furniture rearranging itself and yeah, and they manage to escape the house out through the basement and get into their car. But unfortunately for them, as they're going, the car ends up stalling on a train track. Uh, the lady disappears from inside the car and is screaming in front of them. Uh, not in a frightened way, but more in a in an attacky kind of way. Mm-hmm. And the car is locked. They cannot get out, and it is pancaked by a train. Chekhov's train, actually. You see it Chekhov's earlier train. on in the, in the short so true Chekhov's train if you see a train at the beginning of the short it, it must, must pancake a car yeah. by the end of it also um, um there's just there's a lot of stuff in the front half of this one that gets like brought back in the second half 
mm-hmm. it's just very very cool like the when they are wandering around and they think the ha- that the house is like a haunted house and it, it is a haunted yeah. house but it's not like a haunted house it's like a, a haunted house you know um yeah they there's the one scene where everyone who doesn't have a camera goes into the one dark room and they like scream and come running out and the camera guy's like, oh, my God, what happened? What's going on in there? And they're like, they, they start laughing and they're like, oh, man, it was so creepy. There were like hands reaching out of the walls at us. I've never seen that one before. Yeah. They were experiencing the house actually being haunted and they just didn't realize because they thought it was a haunted house. I love that. But also. Okay. So. What's up? There was an alternate ending. Oh, yes. I was going to talk about this. this. I was going to get to it. Um where radio silence actually filmed an ending where the guys get out of the car in yeah. time, the train hits the car and they are left walking home at the end of the night, talking about how awesome this yeah, how Halloween crazy was. The it's night like the was best Halloween and how much fun they had together with like the flaming wreck of the car in the background the whole time, mm-hmm. <laughs> which I, I think would be the That's absolute funny. funniest thing that they could have done. But also like just a- about the house being haunted. You, you yeah. mentioned the stairs to the attic being in the bathroom. Did you Mm -hmm. notice that's not what happens the next time when they go back up to try and get the girl? That's not what happens when they're on their way down. The way that they get up there isn't the same as the way that they come back down. The house is continuously rearranging itself. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can notice there is a chair. The chair that the ghost appears in appears very intentionally kind of in the way in like several different rooms. And like every time they walk through a, a set of rooms, they are arranged different. Like you, they, they never go through the same room twice. I don't think in mm-hmm. all the wandering like through the, the big house long hallway yeah, the, is consistent, but that's yeah, like the layout of the house can't possibly be tracked. It doesn't make any sense. It's like Suspiria or mm-hmm. the shining actually in that way. Yeah. I think that's, that's why really the attic was bathed cool. in red light. Exactly. Because and the hallway the was bathed in green You're light. Finally starting to get it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really like this yeah. one. I think it's fantastic. I love the energy of like the exorcism scene. I yeah. think it's really cool. Because a lot of exorcism scenes in movies, uh, they get, you know, amped up by the inclusion of music. Uh, but there's yeah. like, it's just kind of weird and uncomfortable to be watching it from the outside, knowing it's legit, unlike these guys. Yeah. Um, and you're just watching these guys do the whole thing, which is just basically screaming at a woman. Uh, who is tied up and that's all that anyone who's just on the outside would know yeah and it's just it's really weird and it's kind of liminal just like watching Mm -hmm. it happen yeah Yeah. it feels like a scene out of a dream or something yeah very dreamlike yeah it's fun very cool i love it i love this one it does a lot of the stuff that i liked out of hell house Mm. but better i think mm-hmm. honestly yeah this is really because wish... it was shorter well wow. there's a lot less silence... establishing that... shit i would be thrilled to watch radio silence make a hell house personally i feel like they would do a good I, one. if if they didn't already run the concept into the ground with three movies yeah i think that mm-hmm. radio silence taking this and turning it into a version of hell house would have been great mm. yeah It'd be cool cool uh... but i love the effects in this one yeah I love the plot in this one. Just being some friends who are going yeah, out to have a good time. wandering into Nanny something. Cam's roommate, who's just like, yeah, okay, have fun, you fucking like, loser. Yeah, you know you're an adult, right? <laughs> <laughs> also, there's this and, thing that he says right before Nanny hmm. Cam leaves. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off here. No, 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 go off. The roommate, as Nanny Cam is getting ready to leave, the roommate says, hey, your dumbass friends are here. Obviously showing he's not got no respect for these guys. But also, as mm-hmm. Nanny Cam is on his way out the door, the roommate is watching the news, and he points at it, and he says, you know all this is going down at midnight, right? And I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, no, I was, I was kind of confused. So I tried Googling, like, what happened on October 31st, 1998 at midnight. Like, just anything I can do to try and figure out what that might be in reference to. Fucking nothing. There wasn't even a full moon that night. Not even a full moon. It was a waxing there gibbous wasn't even a full moon. It wasn't even oh a full moon. Oh my god. Yeah. The waxing gibbous is the least interesting moon. <laughs> Many people are saying this. Everybody says it. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Everyone knows it's the least interesting moon. Alright. Um, <laughs> so um what's what's our uh, rankings for 10, 31, 98? 
by Radio Silence. I'm giving it like a nine. I love it. Um, I'm also at a nine one, for this one. This one's like a seven yeah. for me. I was okay. going to say a solid it. seven. Yep. My favorite. Yeah, we one all agree. This is the best the one in the movie. <laughs> yes, without and a doubt. They saved the best for easily. last. Yeah, it's a good and one. It's to not good on. enough to ju- it is. It's not good enough to justify the it rest. It doesn't of it. save it. I, this, I liked it so much if you that I wanted to watch the whole thing again because I was like, if this one is so good. Surely Maybe there's got to be out. something I just don't get in the others. There wasn't, but <laughs> this is the segment that I heavily recommend you check out separate. Yeah. If you want to check out the other segments, it's it's all up to you. More power to sure. you. Be warned. But... Ten thirty one ninety eight is one to watch. Yeah, highly it recommend. Is these by far stand out from this entry of VHS. Yeah, like not even close. It's like. Well, you know, let's get into let's get into ranking them. Um, the first place for me is segment five. And then there's like three spaces before we hit segment four as my second favorite. <laughs> <laughs> because uh-huh. yeah, uh, this one stands out so heavily as a well constructed and coherent short because the con- the core concept is just what it is. There's some goofy moments like, hey, we're going to go scare this guy. And they're just basically like t posing in the next room waiting to be scared it's so funny i love that (laughs) scene so much and then he spanks him with the sword it's just like it's funny you know like there's funny moments to this once again it's just guys but it's also like yeah and they're not being gross they're not being creepy this ep this entry saves the movie for me and is why i think i like vhs the first movie here more than i do Mm -hmm. Um, yeah because this one just leaves you with such a better taste in your mouth than any of the rest of the movie does although and then the credits kick right back in with the credits to remind you why you shouldn't like it (laughs) yes oh my god um the the music that plays in the credits is a lot like the uh you wouldn't download a car music it kind of is by the way if you just like turned the gain up on that so it got all weird and distorted uh but anyway uh my my ranking my personal ranking is um 1031.98 1031.98 in first place. Yeah. The sick thing that happened to Emily when she was younger in second place. Oh, okay. I think second honeymoon maybe in third place, but the Tuesday the 17th is starting to like warm up on me. I legitimately okay, you know what? No. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do it this way. I think that this if you fucking hell. I think that it starts at its worst and gets better as it goes on. That's the stance I'm gonna take. I think maybe you could swap Amateur Night and Second Honeymoon, maybe, mm. but I don't know. I I think solidly. I I agree. It's it's it, you can see it in in the rankings, like the number the number rankings that that I gave. But yeah, uh, it goes it goes worst to best as the yeah. movie goes on. Um, but With the, the worst, worst of all, worst of all by far, first three minutes is the framing yeah, narrative, geez. especially the first yeah. like seven minutes and it's not it's never quite worth it and it's tainted the whole time and um the second one is better the worst the second one's framing narrative is so much cleaner okay like i think there's just a huge jump in like badness from the sick thing that happened to emily when she was younger to uh fucking tuesday the 17th 17th like as much as I think the first two are the absolute worst, I think that we just kind of immediately like from Tuesday the seventeenth into segment four, there's like it's like I'm watching a different movie completely at that point. Mm. A different anthology that has a different thing going on. Yeah, like um, a different theme entirely. Right. Yeah. And then my thing with the radio silence one, as much as it's my favorite and I gave it a pretty decent rating, I still think if it were in a different anthology that had more stuff, there's a chance that it would not be the best one in that anthology. It's just I don't like, think oh, sure. Yeah, it wouldn't be the best in a sure, yeah, better anthology, but. Right, exactly. I think it's good, I think but I... I think it's only the best and it's be- the best by a wide margin, but it's only yeah. is because everything else is so poor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is the only part of this movie I remembered. Yeah, was the radio silence segment. Yeah, I every other segment I quote unquote had remembered from this movie because I remembered them all as I was watching sure. them. But every other segment that I supposedly remembered is from VHS two or viral. Right, right. And they're a lot less sexually uncomfortable 
from my memory. I'll I'll drop a more like updated thing soon because I am gonna rewatch these. But my memory of the VHS franchise is not represented in this movie. Okay. And mm-hmm. I would really like to see if maybe they're all just kind of mid with a few standouts and 94 revived my love of it. Or mm-hmm. if there's actually like a good entry in the franchise. Right. Uh, but how do, how do you two feel about um, the rankings? Do you generally agree it's kind of worst to best? Yeah. Well, that's Jeff, where um, I stand. I know. I mean, I, I, I'm a, a big, big Tuesday the 17th fan. I, I think I would put that one as being like the second best after uh, so swapping three and four Mm -hmm. uh i think that's reasonable yeah i won't i wouldn't like yeah i think that those two are swappable i I, my note saying that segment four is still the best part uh up so far i think stands for me but Mm -hmm. it's a ranking that makes sense for me as well yeah yours i I feel like we agree we all agree on the highest and lowest points on this movie and that's you know, I I'm not going to get bogged down in specifying how I think the middle should be arranged, but I will not lie. I would be very very upset if we did not agree what the lowest point that of this would movie be was. very upsetting. Yeah, that would be. That'd it be would bad. be a podcast ending argument. I believe. I think it would. <laughs> I would argue either of the first two are the worst. Yeah. Um, but but yeah. the rest, I I agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of backwards order. Yeah, either of the mm-hmm. first two are pretty bad. Um, My only and thought the framing device is the worst. Is I think that oh the first two segments or the first two including the framing device, Emma. Oh, I wasn't counting the framing. Oh, device. okay, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, okay, cool. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's that's VHS, I guess. Um, uh, are we ready for Noah's? Notes? I'm going to record something uh, oh. for the beginning of this episode. By the way, I'll, I'll leave this in now because why not? I am going to put something. Um, in between Emma's story and the intro, just to let people know, maybe this is one to listen before you watch. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that's it is a, this is, it's an upsetting movie. Yeah, very much. You don't need very to watch much. it. Um, you don't need to watch it. Yeah. If you don't if want you're, to. If, Definitely. Yeah, if that kind of. Listen to what we said. Yeah. And if anything stands out as something you're interested in seeing, look up the segment separately. But the framing narrative is not worth watching. So you do not need to watch this movie. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. yeah. Once again, the framing narrative actively detracts from the quality of everything else that is in the movie. So, all right. So, I believe Nina is going to read notes now. All right. Yes. Yes, we are. Um. <laughs> okay. So the first one, uh, Noah says, um, Noah says, if I didn't know where this was going, I'd wonder if the like the weird girl was just weird. And then he mm-hmm. says, scaly legs and black tongue, red flag, true. But all the guy says um, is, hey, wait a minute, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, maybe not. There are, they are super high uh, at this point as well. Oh, um, yeah, there is that. You gave the, the, like, succubus or whatever she is fucking coke, and you were like, yeah, this is going to go great. Um, Noah says, um... Dong, just a smidge, and then the next note says, "Nope, whole mass. That's just dong." Yep. <laughs> uh, and then a few down, it's like Laval ripped off dong. He deserves it. Uh, this is something that I've okay. So I've seen a few dongs removed from body props mm-hmm. at this point in my life. <laughs> this one looked really funny. Yeah, like, <laughs> this was just this was a dick and balls. It was dick it was and just balls. a dildo. It was, it, and it flopped so. <laughs> oh my god it bounced <laughs> it did it, it just like blew me there this is very it's good. a pity it didn't um, explode that's the one thing that could have been cooler yeah <laughs> you would have had to once again wolf cop on top of the dong game always with the exploding and dick. also another anthology the mortuary collection <laughs> uh noah it's says weird that it happened twice <laughs> in the framing device interlude he says, as a uh, as a Skyrim net reference, he says, a new hand touches the cassette. First of all, not a cassette, I don't think. Yep, it's a VHS. Secondly, he spelled it touches wrong. He spelled it T-O-U-H-C-E-S. I was typing fast. Uh-huh. Gotta go fast. <laughs> so just just a mess of a note overall. Good job, Noah. Um, Noah says... Nothing really good about the second one. Just a lot of comments on how the boyfriend is... Um, an asshole. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, 
Noah says, I like that this short just includes them filming random arguments they're having. Yeah, they yeah. <laughs> it's like we there's no there's no good like in world reason for couples to be only filming their arguments, but it's very yeah, funny it's, every time. The it whole happens. thing really is just them having small arguments over and over until he gets murdered. Like that's it. Oh my god. <laughs> We didn't talk about yep. this when we talked about Tuesday the 17th. Oh. But remember him talking about catching the fear? The fear. Oh, that's yeah. why he has oh, yeah. drugs. It's when you, the fear is when you do too many drugs and you get all like scared of everything. <laughs> uh, I don't want to get the fear. Noah says, Noah says, this time I'm ready for him. And then immediately follows with, is not ready, which is true. She literally, she's like, I've laid traps. I'm super ready. And then she forgets the most important thing that she said about this slasher. Yeah. Which is so funny to me. Which is the whole reason that she, like, made sure that they had the camera and all. Yeah. But then also exactly. she throws that, like, what, handful of mud or whatever it is at the camera when the guy's, like, filming her at one point. Like, why does she do that? Yeah, if I don't know. This is definitely one of those shorts. Her, like, It's one of the shorts that feels like why are we filming this yeah. yeah 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 oh zach was not the mustached man oh my bad about tape 56 oh no my mistake zach was not the mustache it doesn't man. matter this is They're such just... important information for us we all cared so much about the mustache man uh, i know i know noah says um this segment he says about uh segment four um the sick thing that happened to emily he says this segment freaked me out so bad because i watched it on my laptop um, so I could see that. Yeah. I could see that being specific. Yeah, I watched um, all the VHS movies on my laptop in my room at night. Um, so that definitely so brave. contributed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Noah says, he complains, he's like, this man seems like he doesn't care about anything. He seems emotionless. A couple notes later, Noah says, still seems like he doesn't care. I'm trying to remember if it's because she's a better actor or if it's that he's nefarious. And then the next note says, I think it's that he's nefarious. It might be a little um, bit of both. <laughs> I'm willing to believe both. I think it is. Are you telling me the thing is part human? <laughs> oh. <laughs> the role of James will be played by Christopher Walken. Are you telling me? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't go cutting your arm open. I'll look at it when I get there. <laughs> That's really good, John. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Noah says, I get the point that he's some sort of agent, but who does this? True. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Noah says, um, for ra the radio silence one, he says, I think this one is super good. I really hope it's the one that I remember. This is repeated several times. He has been stung by the rest of the movie and is now terrified that he's just been wrong the whole time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had such good memories of this movie, and it was only this short. Um, Noah says, I love how... I, this is so funny to me. Noah says, I love how none of the hand CGI is bad, even if the birds in the pots are a little rougher. The birds look like they're from Birdemic. Yeah, I swear to God. It's literally just like a little <laughs> 2D sprite that gets thrown across the screen. And... <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the birds are pretty bad. Um, but yeah, that was that was the last one from Noah. Uh, the birds were so bad. Um, one thing, I can't remember if it was Unabomber or if it was the Marine, but they were wearing their sunglasses in the, like, oh, in yeah. the car at night. And we're like, it's so dark, I can't see anything. Oh, wait. And they took the glasses off. The guy's like, did you just say it's too dark? And then you took off your sunglasses? Yeah. Very funny moment. It's just guys being dudes. I don't know. Once again, it's just guys being dudes. <laughs> it's just guys being dudes. Yeah, that was VHS. There's VHS. That's VHS. 2012. Um, what are we watching next time? Hellraiser. The new Hellraiser. Oh, the new 2022. one. 2022. Yeah, very exciting. David Brighton, her redemption arc. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, the ritual. I think the ritual is pretty good. It's not like perfect or anything, but I liked it. Yeah. Uh, it did not hit for me the first time because it wasn't what I expected it to Fair. be. I haven't seen it. I do want to see it though. I like it. We should uh, cover it sometime. We'll get to it. But yeah, Hellraiser coming up next. Um, sorry that I gave bad recommendations on this one. Yeah, how dare you? Um, 
I will uh, please follow me on Twitter at Bubba. God, I almost said Bubba Wubba Dab. Yeah, <laughs> Bubba the Bad. B U B B A D A B A D. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna post my updates about VHS two and viral um, as soon as possible. Maybe even before this episode comes Ooh. out. Definitely before this episode comes out. Uh, so that's the point. I might even watch them tonight scale. while Emma's streaming. So yeah, we'll see. Well, I for um, one am going to be watching the stream. Yeah, me too. So. <laughs> I am a better friend. Wow, way to oh yeah, way to not be supportive, Noah. Damn, <laughs> I, can, I can multitask for he VHS. Does, Noah does frequently watch his friend's streams while having something else up on the TV. Oh yeah, that's this fine. Is, I'm probably like, going to be like, this yeah. is a call out to my friend's streaming. I'm sorry, I just cannot pay attention. Yeah, like that. I mean, I'm probably going to be like, <laughs> I do, I do the same thing. Yeah. program or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jeff, where <laughs> can we find you? Can you can find me on Twitter at Bubba Wubba Dab. <laughs> oh. Whoa. I am Bubba Wubba Dab. <laughs> no, I am Bubba Wubba Dab. <laughs> <laughs> cool. What about everyone else? <laughs> uh, I'm Nina. You can find me at on Twitter at Nina Wolverina, on Instagram at Nina Wolverina. On Tumblr, where I am pretty darn active, especially as as people start to panic about Twitter, if I and I do think while most of that is like, hopefully not going to be that bad. I understand the freak out, and we have a we we have a lot of stuff that might happen between now and when this episode airs. Uh, so find mm-hmm. me on Tumblr at Nina Wolverina with a three instead of the E because I locked myself out of my own account. Um, <laughs> Nina Wolverthrina. Nina Wolverthrina. Um, I'm very active there. I post all my art there. I post a lot of horror movie takes. My take on Wendell and Wild, the stop motion animation movie that just came out, is on there. Um, also, please watch that. It was so good. Um, great times. Great times. But yeah, that's uh, that's where you can find a me, Mario. <laughs> Mushroom. <laughs> I thought Kingdom. your name was here Nina. Wait, Mushroom Chris Pratt. Kingdom, here we come. <laughs> That's a better Mario um, voice. And I'm Emma. Pratt. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Emma, also known as Emma Panada. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Emma Panada. Um, I do TTRPG things. I'm also writing a TTRPG system called All the Witches. You can find information about that at All the Witches underscore on Twitter. Uh, I'm running a one shot for it tonight. So when this episode comes out, it will have already happened. But the VOD will be up somewhere. So uh, if you look through my tweets, you'll probably find oh. that. Um, but thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I also run the podcast Twitter at Casual Horror Pod. Uh, so go follow that if you want to know when new episodes are coming out. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Yeah. Goodbye. Cast you down. Cast you down. Cast you down. <laughs> <laughs>